Hey guys, Sean, Kayak Angler. Well, here in New Jersey, we're at the end of fall, heading into winter, and um, a lot of guys already put their stuff away or thinking about it, and uh, my kayak fishing days are going to be far and few between. Um, the older I get, the more I can't stand the cold, and I hate winter, but I do enjoy ice fishing. I haven't done it in quite a few years, but um, hopefully I'll be getting back into it this year. So I just wanted to go over some things that I bring uh, when I go ice fishing to make my day uh, a little more easier and uh, safer too. Um, on the water, safety is always number one priority, especially on the hard water. Um, I try not to leave anything to chance when I'm out on the ice. Um, I always, always hear stories about guys falling through. Um, you know, sometimes it's unavoidable. Sometimes it's avoidable, but. I'm gonna go through some stuff that I bring, like I said, to make my day a little more comfortable and safer. All right, start off with the uh, tip-ups I use. Uh, this is the traditional style tip-up. Uh, these are made of wood, and you can also get them in plastic. They operate the exact same way. Open them up. This goes in the hole, over the hole that you drilled. This is your fishing line, this is where your bait is. Goes down below in the hole flag goes down when a fish takes your bait and starts swimming off flag goes up this way you know you got a fish on uh, but whatever state you're in always check your laws uh, here in New Jersey with the tip ups you gotta have your name and address on them all your tip ups um, I use two different kinds of tip ups I also use what's called a thermal tip up it's a round plastic disc and if you look on the bottom here it's filled with styrofoam I never have but they say you can use these in the summertime too on the open water because they float um, I think a lot of guys use these you know maybe catfishing or whatever but I never used it in the summertime it's always in the winter time same principle of the uh, regular tip up on the bottom here's your spool pull it down this part goes in the water this same thing with the flag, the flag comes over, fish takes the bait, starts swimming, it spins this part up here, and when that spins, it releases the flag, and then you know you got a fish on. This particular model also has, over here, a little storage compartment, you can put uh, other hooks, sinkers, or whatever in there, a couple of little lures, but this is nice because other unlike these tip ups that leave the hole uh, exposed this covers it up and prevents for the most part prevents the hole from icing over but if your hole does ice over you can use if I can find it there it is a strainer All right, this is a nice big strainer as you're drilling the hole the, the snow will backfill into the hole so you have to pull it out a little bit a couple times and scoop out the ice and like when you're using the traditional tip up the hole will ice over and once in a while I'll just have to clean the hole out with the strainer this is a nice handy thing to have also in addition to the tip ups sometimes I use a jigging rod uh, you want a nice small short rod because you're going to be sitting right over the hole if you use a big rod you know, you'll be sitting here and the hole will be all the way over there and you really can't get any good jigging. So a nice short rod with a nice small reel. Uh, get some ice line. I've tried to use monofilament. The ice line uh, holds up to the cold better. All right. Um, it's, I guess you can use braid too. I've never used braid, but I, I try to stay, stay away from the mono. But nice small, get right up in there. So you can jig. And speaking of jigs, let me show you a couple of jigs. These are older jigs that I've had. They're a little beat up. But here you can just see a couple of different sized ice fishing jigs. Uh, you can jig these on their own. Um, or you can do it like I do. I'll get a dozen shiners and I'll tip this with a shiner. All right? Some guys even take the shiner and break it in half and put half a shiner on. All right? But either or. Uh, you can use worms too. Use uh, little garden worms, put them on, but I think the shiners work better. Also, once in a while, I don't use this too often, but use this with the rod. 
put this right next to the hole, stick the rod in. The only thing with this, you really have to keep an eye on it because there's no flag like the tip ups. You just have to keep an eye on the tip. Alright, I'll only use this once in a while. Usually I'll be jigging in the hole instead of using this. But this is another good thing to have. Also check with your local laws as to how many devices you can use. Uh, I guess I haven't done it in Jersey in a while. I believe it's five devices. So I use usually three or four tip ups and a rod. I don't really bring more than one rod because I can't jig more than one. Although some guys do, they'll sit there and jig two rods. But I like the tip ups better. And um, you've seen these on my other video. These come in real handy. You can wear these as a mitten because, as, as, as you know, mittens keep your hands warmer than gloves. Okay, but mittens aren't fu that functional when you're trying to do certain things, especially tying on lures, um, baiting a hook. This is where these come in handy while you're sitting around waiting. You can wear them as a mitten. But if you got to change baits or tie a new lure on, falls back, then you got use of your four fingers. The thumb, though, the thumb stays covered. All right, but at least you have the use of your four fingers. It just makes it easier when you change your bait. Also, as far as the safety, you just get a pair of these. These are cleats that you put on the bottom of your shoes. Now, sometimes the ice isn't that slippery. Other times, it's extremely slippery. And it could be kind of, you know, treacherous when you're walking. Usually, I'll have my bucket in one hand. I'll have the bait in the other hand or a, coffee, a thermos of coffee. And I'll take these and what these do is if you look here you got four cleats these are metal these are pretty sharp you put this on the bottom of your shoe bottom of your boot you bring the strap over the top down and then hook it right there and then these give you nice traction then you can walk and not worry about slipping or falling also I carry this with me um, now what this is for, um, knock on wood, uh, you know, I never fell through the ice, um, God forbid, you pull this apart and there's two little spikes. Now what you're supposed to do with these, a lot of guys will wear them around their neck, okay, you're on the ice, um, like I said, you know, knock on wood, God forbid I never fall through the ice, I don't know how quick my reactions would be, but you're supposed to grab these and then stand the ice as you're going down and this will give you something to hold on to okay but like I said I'm not sure how quick my reactions would be but I guess better to, to have them you know God forbid you need them it's better to have them this is the bucket I bring okay it's got a rope handle not crazy about the rope handle but what I do like about this bucket the lid is a cushion so it turns into a nice comfy seat. Okay, I spent before I got this bucket, I spent many times sitting on an upside down bucket. Not the most comfortable in the world. Take everything out, put the lid on, now I got a comfortable seat. The only other thing too is when I put everything in there, with my rods and everything, I can't put the top on. So it's just one extra thing to carry. But while your buddies are out there sitting on the upside down buckets or sitting on the ice you're gonna have a nice comfy seat all right that's about it but uh, a couple more tips that I can pass along um, one of the best pieces of uh, ice fishing advice I got was don't ever be the first on the ice you know you show up this is when I go usually there's somebody on the ice already and uh, I was never the first on the ice but if you are the first you know uh, especially if you're not sure what the ice conditions are walk out a little bit and drill a hole and then measure the ice. If you have like two or three inches of ice and you're 10 yards off the shore, it's a good idea to turn around and look for another lake or go home. But if you're 10, 20 yards off the shore and you drill a hole and you're in eight, 10 inches of ice, you know, I go out another 20, 30 yards and I'll drill a hole. I'll keep doing that till I get to the area where I'm fishing. And then I'll pop a few holes and start. Um, like I said, you know, if you're close to shore and you're starting to hit thin ice don't take the chance okay you can always go somewhere else or wait another day or two if the temperature drops but again check the local laws um, 
like I said before, I haven't ice fished in a long time. I believe the New Jersey minimum is three or four inches of ice. Me personally, I like five or better. Um, it, I use a manual auger and drilling through eight inches of ice. Yeah, it's back breaking, but it's a little more uh, comfort knowing that I'm on eight, ten inches of ice. Um, but that's about it. Uh, if you guys have any other things that you bring, any other safety uh, items, any more tips or whatever, just leave a comment. And uh, I'll see you guys on the water or maybe even on the ice. Bye.